So David is, uh, he's become king, and he's, uh, he's a, a couple of years, a few years into his kingship. And uh, Saul, you'll remember, Saul was the former king, and Jonathan, Saul's son, um, was in line to be king and gave his robe to David, basically passed the kingship off to David, and then died in battle, and Saul, King Saul, died in battle. Now, just a little history. Typically, because these were kings and not presidents, the next king that comes in was typically the heir, uh, the youngest, I mean, the oldest son. So if you uh, somehow won the kingship and you weren't like, for instance, Jonathan was supposed to be the next king. He doesn't become king. David becomes king. David would typically kill off all Saul's sons so that they didn't try to rightfully become heirs to the throne and his grandsons. That's the way it kind of worked. It sounds really evil. I'm sure it was, but that's what they did. So David... Uh, all of Saul's sons actually died in battle, and Jonathan's son also, all his sons died in battle. So David's, um, he's got the throne now, and he says to his, his guys, his servants, like, is there any sons of Saul that I can honor? And they go, um, yeah, there's this one guy, Mephibosheth, and he is lame. Um, he's been lame since he was a little boy. And he's the only son of Jonathan who's left in the whole lineage. And David says, bring him to the palace. So they go get him and they bring him. And you can imagine what, what Mephibosheth is thinking. He's probably completely terrified. When he gets to David's house or the palace or wherever it was that they had dinner, he falls down on his face. He, you know, he can't walk anyway. He's lame. He falls down on his face and he starts begging for his life. And he says to David, I'm a dog. I'm a dog. Just... I'm just a dog. It's just telling David, like, I'm never going to try to get the throne. You don't have to kill me. And David said, oh, no, no, get up. And he gets him up. And you'll probably remember the story if you read this uh, a while back. But he gets him up and he says to him, I am going to honor you because of the covenant I have with your father and because your grandfather was king. And you will sit at my table from this day forward. And I will set my servants... And, they will, and I am giving you all the land that your grandfather owned. I am giving it back to you. And my servants will till your fields and keep your flocks the rest of your life. I love this part. And he says, and you will sit at my table. How many understand that when Mephibosheth, I was doing so good, can't overthink this, you'll really mess it up. When Mephibosheth was sitting at the table of the king with all the, other, with all the other princes, his lameness was covered. He was sitting at the noble king's table. Are you with me? And his shame was covered. You will sit at my table. And all the things that you have been shamed about that you can't do. I can't plow my fields. I can't be a worker. You can imagine what it was like in those days. I mean, you couldn't get a computer job. You couldn't get a desk job. There were no desk jobs. I mean, if you were a man and you were lame, you, were, you get it. Your identity's gone. And David's like, and you, and you will be a master over all my servants who will till your fields. What did David do? He just restored his identity and said, your shame is covered in this house. How many know nobility covers shame? You remember, I'll finish with this verse, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. First verse I ever memorized in the entire Bible when I was one year old in the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. Yay, I memorized it in King James. Yay. By the way, that's a mistranslation. Nobody says yay when you go through the valley of shadow of death unless there's something broken in you. Yay, we're going through the valley. No, it's more like, whoa. <laughs> yay, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Your, your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table for me. There's the table again. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord says, you just came through the dark night of the soul, the valley of the shadow of death. What do you think when you go through the valley? Anyone ever been there? Anybody ever camped out there? 
How many know you lay by the still waters and you lay in the green pastures, but you just walk through the valley? Like, just, like people are like, I'm in the valley, just keep walking. <laughs> How long? Till you get out. <laughs> What's the one tool you need when you're in the valley? Keep going. One foot in front of another. I don't feel like walking. Keep walking. <laughs> right? How, how many of you ever, you've been in there, you're like, here's one thing I learned. What is it? Keep walking. And you get out of the valley. And if you've ever been in the valley, you know what I'm talking about. You don't get out in, 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 happy, in happy land. You get out and you're struggling with what happened to me. Why did that happen? Why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to him? Why did it happen to me? What's wrong with me? What am I doing? And the Lord says, come, sit at the table, and let's cover your shame. And by the way, I'll be sitting with you, and the enemy can watch who you're having dinner with. Come watch me have dinner with the king of kings. Now how you feeling? A little different than you felt when I was in the shadow, huh? Oh, yeah. I remember those voices in the shadow. Come on, tell it now. And the Lord covers my lame life. He covers it. I'm not saying he covers it up. I'm saying love covers me and says, you're all right. You know why you're all right? Not because you're perfect, not because you have it all together, not because you've accomplished a lot of things, not because you're good looking or you're this or you're that or you're smart, because you're eating dinner with me. You got an invitation. That's why you're good. You're eating with the king. You are inherently noble. My nobility can cover anyone's shame. I don't know who you are in here. May I guarantee you, if you're human, this message means something to you. Hopefully not in this season, right? Hopefully you're like, yeah, I've been there. But there might be people, you're in the middle of it because we've all been there. Everyone in this room has been there. If you haven't been there, you're like six. <laughs> and maybe you're in the middle of it right now and you're just like, you know, I, man, you know, it's just like, I totally get it. I like to pray for you. I won't want to shame you. I don't want you to stand up so you stand out. I just want you to stand up so we can coin an E of you. So we can connect with you. So we can like, we get you. We've been there. Can we pray for you? Can we make this the shortest journey you've ever had out of shame? If that's you, and if you're watching by Bethel TV, I'm so, we're so glad you connected. We'd like you too. If you're living in shame, just stand up with us and as a prophetic declaration that the prayers that we're praying for these folks, they're touching you too. Could you just stand? Like this is the power of authenticity right here. You're standing, you're being vulnerable. All those things that Brene Brown said, you're being courageous, you're being, you're being vulnerable, you're being authentic. You're saying, that's me, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of that. That preacher is preaching my life right now. And by the way, I just preach my life. <laughs> I can preach it with I can preach it with zeal because I know what it's like because I've been there so many times.